Hello, and welcome to another episode of Shampoo and Booze. This is episode number 29 at shampooandbooze.com. We are running a rental business on Airbnb. That's what this podcast is about. <laughs> anyway, we have to remind ourselves. Uh, so yes. today I just really wanted to kind of give some perspective to ourselves. And, you know, some people have been emailing us, asking us questions. And I just, it, the kind of questions are this. They're like, what is it like to run an Airbnb business? Because I guess people are coming from the fact of like, okay, I've got an extra room. I've got an extra house. I, I can invest in a house, you know, whatever. Right. So they're like, well, what is it like actually it's running it? And this is where I just want to make clear in our experience. For us, all the work is done up front, you know? A lot of the work I mean, is I would say, I mean, Ryan might disagree with this, but I would say like 90% of the work is done up front, in my opinion. Okay, that's an interesting opinion. <laughs> uh, so sure. in the sense of like this. So here's, here's the upfront work. Number one is... Maybe if you want to purchase a place. So right. you have to purchase the right place. And that is, first you have to uh, research to make sure people even want to come to the area if you're trying to buy the house in. So that's in going to Airbnb or another site and just a scene. If other people are renting, how much they rent for. And then you just got to make sure those numbers work. Right. You know, if I buy it for X amount and rent it for X amount, am I going to make enough to cover my costs? Right. I mean, do, do you not agree that there's a... Oh, I agree with that. Okay. I mean, you need to know if the area you're looking at or the area you live in is a place people come to for what whatever reason. Right. Vacation, uh, work. Visiting a university, right. uh, you're in a metropolitan area that people come to for a million reasons, you know, or just is vacation it because sense? it's yeah. yeah, and and that's especially true if you're going to actually buy a place sure. like we did, and there's actually this one it's percent rule that that exists in the real estate world, which I didn't I know about, but I guess it makes sense, and that one percent a rule is. Your rent needs to be 1% every year of what you paid for the house. Mm -hmm. So, like, we bought a house for $150,000. It's $50, right. And the 1% rule is, well, we need to make $1,500 a month where if you're bringing in enough income in to pay off a mortgage right. and to cover the house. And that's good because we doubled that. So yeah. our average is about $3,000 yeah. a month. So that's good. Or... If you're thinking, well, I'm going to turn an existing property into an Airbnb place. Right. Either I have like a, an outbuilding or a second, like a guest home or something, or if you have a room in it's your house. Or you have another house that was a long-term rental that right. you want to turn into a short-term rental. And so the work up front is you got to fix that thing up. Yeah. I mean, you know, you have to decide how you want to list that property. Like, is it just going to be kind of a down and dirty arena where people are really just paying for the its location and they're not really going to care if their amenities or if it's really nice. I mean, some people do that. Like if you have a, a room in New York or, or Amsterdam or LA, you can pretty much just like throw in some Ikea furniture, slap and a you, coat of paint on and you're, you're done. Good, yeah. Uh, we don't recommend that, but... <laughs> or you can also, you know, work to make it nice and be more at the top end of the a market so it your yeah. can charge it's more for the place and then before you even made a dime off this place you have to take time to take really nice uh, photos and work on your description of the place yes which some people don't do no like, a lot of people don't do if you look in at your area you'll probably notice like us that people have taken really bad photos that are dark that aren't sized properly, that are blurry. The rooms are messy. <laughs> and the descriptions are very strange where, yes. where they don't put any time into really telling people what the place is. Yeah. And it's very strange. So for us, we describe everything. We break it down where we've described every room and what's in every room. Yeah. And, what's, and I can imagine people are like, well, people will figure that stuff out. Like, why do I need to tell them? Trust me, people read that stuff. Surprisingly, people read every sentence. I Some mean, people read every sentence. We'll have sentence. people read back to us stuff. They're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> we're in the master bedroom. Yeah, I read it had Apple TV. Oh, yeah, I read, you know, uh, it's got a noise. It's machine in it. That's great. You know? I mean, when people say that, we're like, 
you actually read the whole thing? Because <laughs> I personally am terrible at reading that stuff. See, I... You read it all. When though. we go and travel, I'm yep. the one that does the... It's renting, and I read all that stuff. read it all, yeah. It, it's almost like if people aren't telling me everything, I kind of feel like they're hiding something or... Or there's stuff missing. Or the, or there's not going to be is what I expect. Right. Like, I can't assume anything. Yeah. You know? So anyway, that's our opinion. So that's... That is work is done up front. And then the other thing that you need to, to do, again, in our opinion, before you even rent, that's think through the entire check-in process mm. and check-out yes. process. And, of course, it's going to be tweaked as everything's in a motion. But, you know, we really spent time imagining if we were staying here, what would we be asking ourselves? Right. You know, and that's like, where is everything? And... What's the process of me coming in and when I check out? What do I need to do? What happens? Well, like, you know? like the biggest question that people always have, even though we spell it out and we tell them in messages, how do I, do I meet you to get the keys? Are you going to be there? Is there a code? You need to figure that out first. Do you have an electronic lock? Do you have keys? What do you have? Like, can you just give people the address and Google Maps is going to be okay? Like, or not. For us, we just typed in our address into Google Maps and realized Google Maps didn't really know where we were. They thought there was a... Well, well, there's like a creek that's parallel to our road, and they were saying that that was the road. Right. And I, I mean, I'm telling you, I was on email forums, on Google forums being like, please, somebody fix this. I have a, you know, a business down here. And they did. And they did. They fixed yeah. it so, within like a week. So that's part of the work that has to happen is yeah. just to, to, to make sure, act like you're a renter. Right. And make sure it's going to all yeah. it work out. And, and the way that we figured that out was from driving from our house, we did the GPS, Google Maps, and we followed it. And we're like, oh, it's off by this much. Right. And then we even not only did that but we also invited some friends yes in a close by town and said will you guys come and stay you know have a free a weekend like enjoy it you know we we put a lot of work into it and we just acted like they were they were renters. stay and we were like here's the info figure it out and they actually came and you know had the door code yep. and uh, they stayed and then they gave us feedback as to what worked what didn't work what they what we had yeah what we should add to my it. family too i had my mom and my sister come a few months before that too and i was like you're gonna cook a meal a few meals like am i missing what am i missing right. you know what do i need a certain pan did i forget this you and know? so that was very helpful yeah. to get that kind of feedback and then okay and now once all that's done then we actually put it on the a market and right. started booking people and uh, renting and then in my opinion then it's just upkeep Yes. That's why I said it's 90-10. I mean, maybe uh, Ryan's going to say, what, 80-20? No, it's just uh, when I say the work is done up – when you say the work is done up front, I understand everything you just said. That is all very important things you have to do. But along with upkeep, you do have to add little things. People suggest things. um, You know, deflectors on the AC on the ceiling. That's awesome. I had no idea we needed that. You know, you have to clean, clearly, you have to clean. Sure. Things get broken, sure. wine glasses break almost sure. every week, you know? Sure. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, we don't have to argue about, per, you know, the per, yeah. percentage of upfront, but I feel like when, I, when I'm in, in, the, in the reason why I say upkeep is a really small part afterwards is that if you've done it right, I mean, yes. if you've made sure the plumbing's good, and the septic's good, and the, and the electric's good, and the AC's good. You know, if if, if you've made everything right, then there really aren't going to be a lot of problems. Basically, this is how I look at it. There are different systems in the house. There's electrical, there's plumbing, there's AC, there's internet. Those are your systems. If those systems are in place and functioning properly, and sometimes there's issues and you tweak them and you fix them, then you're doing good. Right. And and it's for us, you know, because if something's old, we, instead of trying to squeeze out another a year or two for us, it made more sense just to fix it up front. Yeah. So it's done. 
and there's no problem. And we aren't having problems with renters because there's a leak in the ceiling or something. And then we, we have to take everything off the market and cancel people's bookings and then put a roof on it. Just do all that stuff yeah. up front. And again, that's why I say the work, a majority of the work is done up front. And then afterwards, right. you're just chilling. Okay. <laughs> um, I, you know, we talked about this last week, you know, there's a lot of cleaning and you have to decide if that's something you want to do. Um, that's a lot of work. And although some people hire people to clean, so then exactly. it's not a lot of work. Exactly. Them, you know? So that's, that's something you have to look. I don't, I honestly don't mind cleaning and I don't mind doing laundry. It's just part of the business that you have to decide. And this is what we're doing, whether you want to do it or not, or you want to hire it out some of the time. I know. So yep. that's another aspect here. So, you know, there'll obviously be different opinions on this, whether or not it's <laughs> a lot of work or not. But in my opinion, uh, I feel like starting the Airbnb business is really a majority of the work. And then afterwards, it's about upkeep and just, you know, keeping things flowing. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Okay. So our farmhouse that we rent was rented this weekend for Memorial Day. This is Holiday. Memorial Day. It's a long, long weekend. We just got the email from Airbnb saying we had an eight hundred and seventy dollar payout for three nights, which is incredible for us. Yes. Because one of our things this year, this is our second year, was oh, holiday a weekends people book those immediately way in advance. So why not make your holiday a weekend's higher? Yeah. And it, we did. And Orion had been like, instead of charging $225, let's charge $300. $300 a night. And someone booked it and paid us. I mean, we just got that payout email and we were like, did they really actually pay us $300 a night? Basically, they paid us, not. I mean, with fees and everything, $900. Yep. So That's it's, amazing. And it's great. The uh, renters are happy. They're psyched. They're it's a beautiful weekend. They're return renters. They've been here before. Yep. So they knew what they were getting into. So that's that makes us feel very makes good. Makes us feel great. Yeah, obviously. And in June, the it's month that is just starting out, we have all the weekends are uh, rented. And that's pretty much a no-brainer in our yeah. area. I mean, people come here rented. on weekends. So we have 13 nights booked in June. We like to have 20 nights yeah. booked. So we're really uh, missing those people who are, you know, families who are booking the week long as vacations. We just we're still waiting on those people to come. And well, look, school is still in session until the middle of June. Okay, so like two. Is that true? Yes. Wow. Up on the East Coast here. Really? Uh, yes, we got an email from someone who listens to the podcast, and they said, "Look, I'm in the Space Coast of Florida, and we just got out of school, and people are still just mm-hmm. trying to figure out their vacations." And they we actually know. followed some people's advice. They were like, "Put it on Craigslist in, in Florida, in Florida." And I did in, in North Carolina, and so we've actually put the it's booking up along the east coast so and, we'll see what happens we don't know about craigslist yeah. i mean i just don't know if anybody looks there and then goes to airbnb well it's what's it's funny is we'll get like an email from someone off of craigslist and there's like is is it booked on a certain day and we're like the link look at the link the link is right there well like, what's hilarious the is account. they they message us like yesterday about memorial day weekend and i just laughed i'm like of course it's booked it's memorial day yeah. weekend uh, and then just our ongoing story of our second a rental that we're fixing up. The house that is taking a lot of work up front to get going. <laughs> yes. Uh, and our big project, is, again, is building a driveway. Yeah. And, um, the the, driveway. and this is something that I think was a good a lesson for Ryan, you know. Oh, man. So, you know, you know when you deal with a contractor... In my opinion, it's not like ordering a hamburger. And yeah, like, it's not make, fast food. Like, make me a hamburger, I need it, to, you know, in right five minutes. Now. It's building a relationship. Uh, because what, what in, my, in my experience is you're trying to find someone that's really good at what they do, that enjoys is what they do, and that's going to put some a love into their work. So it's about building that relationship so they want to do it. It's for you. And I know that's crazy. You know, people are like, but you're paying them money. Like, they should just do it. You should order them around. 
It's not like that. I've never had good experience with that way of a working. So we actually went to the guy who's going to do our uh, to the the contractor that's going to build it for us, and and uh, we actually just sat down it's with him and we were talking about his life and his family. Look, and also, I have to say this: we live out in the country. I think it's different than living in the city. I don't think it's much different, but it's a different time scale. Like people say, they're going to be there Monday. It might no, be this it's, Monday. It's true. Look, might con- be next I, th- I think contractors all across the board. urban areas. Like, look, it's like the <laughs> okay. stereotype of the contractor yeah. who doesn't show up. Who doesn't? Yeah. And but anyway, it was good. We sat down. We talked about his family, his life, and then we got to our project. And we just started talking about. It, and he started saying, "Yeah, I've been thinking about it." You know what? I go to bed at night and I think about it's your project, and I'm thinking about, hmm, what if I take a turn here and I'll put a ditch here, and you know, he's <laughs> and so he's thinking on it. And that's really important, you know, yeah. in my mind. And it makes me feel confident. And and we have never had a serious issue with a contractor because we've always had pretty deep ed- relationships. Yes. It's with them. Yes. You know? Like, our contractor, like, if I haven't seen our contractor in a few months, I'm, like, giving them a hug. I'm like, hey, we have, like, what's right. going on? You know? <laughs> and you know, again, it's it, maybe it's just being out in a rural area, but I think that's much different than when you hire it's one of those companies where, again, they send out the kind of executive guy to come and give you. That's a quote, happened to us. And then yeah. they send the group of guys that are getting paid ten bucks an hour just to come out and do it. Sometimes it gets done good. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, it's just. I feel like it's those, different. Those are the kind of jobs, though, like where someone's either building new to flip a house or they're flipping a house like that kind of relationship doesn't work for us but you know, you know what i mean yeah but i but i think even they have issues uh yeah if you go on a uh a youtube and if you if you can find this english show grand design grand design which it's, we love it's this famous show in england it's been on like 20 Forever. seasons <laughs> since the early 90s and uh the whole show is this they actually follow someone doing a self build or you know building a house. It's not all self build, but yeah. But you know building a house from scratch or, or or taking an old house and redoing it, and they actually it's follow them over sometimes six months, a year, two, two years, years, three years, and they and they show the its process. The and, pain and inevitably <laughs> there's always problems with you know contractors, and so yes. it's, so it's 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 not. To me, it's not what part of the country it's you're in, or even what country, country you're, you're in. in. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a thing because yeah, it's a big deal to have someone come out and do a heavy building job. You know, yeah, uh, it's a big deal. Well, so. it's a big deal for them, for you, your budget, your time, your life. The reason that I love Grand Designs is because yeah, I've said this before. I watch that show, and I'm like. Those people are just like us. In fact, they have a project that's even more insane than ours. Like, over the top crazy. And you're just yeah. like, I'm so glad Like we're on the level we're and on. And I think the reason why I like that show, too, is maybe it's just because America's a, a, we have a, another kind of its mentality. Is that it really shows you all the work it takes and the pain and tribulations. Because when In you time. watch, like... HGTV, HGTV, yeah, just show after show of like, you know, I bought a house, flip, flip, flip it in a day. Look, it's all done. It's great. I made ninety thousand dollars. You know, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they don't show you. They do. I mean, I think they show some problems, but because the show is only like thirty-two minutes or whatever, twenty-eight minutes, right. But the way they edit it, I mean, that's grand, what I'm saying. Is like, but the English show is an hour, but they show, right. but. They really show a sense of time and struggle. Right. I feel like the HDTV American shows, you know, they're like, oh, there's a problem. Oh, okay, now it's fixed. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just don't. I feel like people get an un. It, it's an unreal a sense of of, of yeah. how these projects of, of work. The the time, the money, the right. the effort, the and the also struggle. I feel like a lot of those shows they have like. Groups Crew. of like you know yeah. fifteen people. When a normal person, you're gonna be Ill- lucky to have three people. I mean, and very often two people. Right, you know? and like sure, you can get a crew, but it 
if you get a crew, I mean, that's shelling out so much yeah. money every who, week. Who can afford to hire 10, 15, 10, 15 people. guys? Right. I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever seen a project like that right. um, around here. But I think also it makes me feel better because it took us in the house we live in. It took us a year and a half slash two years to finish this thing. Um, and it's all cash out of our pockets. And then the farmhouse took us three years. And I was thinking about it. I was like, we had one guy working on the house. Right. Our contractor. One guy. Sometimes two. Mostly just one. Right. No wonder it took us three years. I'm like, yeah. oh, like I'm watching these shows on HGTV and they're like, we got 10 guys. It's going to take us 30 days. And I'm like, oh, no wonder. They had 10 <laughs> guys and they have all the cash up front. Right. Mostly these people. Or do, so. <laughs> whatever. They, they have yeah, uh, it's money like a whole somewhere. Different thing. So anyway, it's, uh, we'll see. You will hear us next week and you can hear the guy says he's going to come out. This week, <laughs> you'll hear us next Sunday to <laughs> see if he came out. Did the contractor come out and look at the? Driveway. Did he lie to my face? That's going to be the question. Look, you are much better <laughs> at that because I get because you talk to most of those people while I'm doing other things, and you know I'm I'm like having less confidence because I don't talk to them. I'm like I'm the people person, right? You're a certain people person, <laughs> yes. Certain people you deal with, and you're good at dealing with them because you're super patient. So it's hard because you're the one talking to them and whatever. And I'm like, are they coming? They said they were coming. Why aren't they coming? You know, <laughs> that's just that's just it's, what it it's is. True. Okay, uh, so to kind of round this out, our numbers. We didn't book any more bookings this, this week, past week. Right? It's been very quiet. We've just had the same bookings we've always had, so we've booked 155 nights in 2016, either past or a future. Our goal is 200, so mm -hmm. we have 45 more days to book. We can easily do that. I'm just we just need to get those people get on the phone, call us, call now, <laughs> book your vacation. All right, and what did renters leave behind? Okay, renters left behind a melange of stuff. They left us. This group that was going to a party or going to a wedding, I was thinking, oh, they're gonna leave like all this alcohol and like nice beer and wine. One beer. One beer. They left me one beer. Yep. And that's fine. And a jar of pickles. D delicious pickles. A jar of fancy ranch dressing. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, Ryan was obsessed. I'm really scraping the bottle. No. You were obsessed with this stuff. This ranch dressing, it was like. Whatever you know that stuff that's like it's like dressing slash dip and it's right. like in a jar and it's and like it costs like this. seven dollars. Yeah, I'm it? just like I would never buy that for myself, and I just ate it on everything. I was like, <laughs> "What's this? I'm putting dip on it." Because <laughs> so you know everything does taste better when it's free. <laughs> and then the last thing was uh, ooh moisturizer. Moisturizer. They left this fancy like Neutrogena like oil free moisturizer that again I would never buy that for myself. I was like. Right. I'm totally using You know, this. and people who are like, you know, why don't you just buy that for it yourself? Number one, you probably don't know us very well if you're asking that. Mm -mm. But number two is because <laughs> instead of buying fancy $7 ranch I buy a house. Dressing, yeah, yeah. We, we, we have to pay that for driveways. Yeah, paying for a driveway. Because, again, we like to do all that stuff in cash so we don't have exactly. any debt. Okay, that's it for the podcast this week. You can check out the blog at shampooandbooze.com for links we talk about and to join the conversation. Again, you can leave a question or a comment on something you heard. The voicemail line is 540-407-8486. We post an episode every Monday morning. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube, so you always get the latest episode. And if you're interested in listening to our other podcast where we talk about how we sell stuff that we scavenge on eBay and Amazon to fund our renovations, that's at scavengerlife.com. Okay. See you next week. Bye.